you lose the contest? Uh, I'm one of the medics. I'm here to help do, uh, you. So you're in, you're in, a, you're in an IED blast. Operation Bushmaster is the capstone experience of the operational military medicine curriculum at the Uniformed Services University. It represents a mock deployment to the notional country of Pandacar where we present our students with as many challenges that we can possibly generate that represent the, uh, the leadership and operational challenges that they, that they can be expected to see in the real world as they graduate and deploy into their first assignment. The exercise involves two classes of medical students with our fourth years role playing as medical providers in the battalion aid station while our first years are role playing as casualties to support the medical simulation. You got some bruising. Okay. So I got blunt injury. That was actually pretty awesome because I got to be the patient, see how bumpy the ride gets when they're carrying you in the litter, um, see how chaotic it gets and how confused they can get. Um, but they did really well. They diagnosed me right away, got me squared away to the helicopter. Okay. Uh, what's her? She's responsive. She's responsive. Go ahead and throw tourniquets on there. Okay. Okay. Because war is hell and war is chaos in general, we'll not only have our patients that we'll have to treat, but we'll have pyrotechnics that will add to the noise and the confusion. We'll have, again, moulage patients that will look realistic. We'll have simulated uh, patients that say there's a chest tube that needs to be inserted into a patient. Well, we'll have a simulator right next to it. And so it'll be a realistic simulation of combat and chaos. So through all the operational problems, the idea is to introduce adaptive leadership challenges that the students have to face, make decisions on. Um, there often are not correct answers or incorrect answers, but they're simply decision points that we hope challenge the students to broaden their perspectives a little bit on the way things work in the real world. Push, very good, good, good. Good job. Bleeding's minimal at this point. Find us a sperm. I did find a massage. What's it time to do? Get it's her out of the ditch. Yeah, yeah. 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 Get her on this litter and get her inside. Get her out of the ditch. The operational problems fall into several different categories. We have uh, what we call mission level problems that occupy an entire uh, day in Pandacar. Uh, it provides the platoon a focus that, that drives them for an entire training period. Early this morning we got a um, a fragmented order, which is a, basically a short order that said we needed to move our battalion aid station to help support the operating forces here. Um, so that's what we're in the uh, midst of doing right now. On the, on the way we had some casualties that, that we uh, were able to successfully take care of and get medevaced out really quickly. And so, uh, so you can see we're setting up a battalion aid station back here. Folks are pretty tired. Probably slept about a total of like four or five hours of the past uh, three or four days. So, so now the, the leadership challenge is keeping folks motivated and keeping them working hard. So, I want to know what the hell you did with the platoon I left here last night. Because you ain't them. You are much better. You are thinking. You are moving. I'm impressed. Uh, usually there will be a standard single mission uh, that they'll be uh, ordered to accomplish. And then we throw in a bunch of uh, diverting or extraneous or other management issues for them, both from a medical standpoint as well as from a logistical or tactical standpoint. Um, so uh, typically that what they have to do is they have to keep their main mission in mind. And then just like life, just like being in an emergency room or an office practice or in an operating room, uh, Murphy raises his ugly head all the time. And you have to be able to deal with Mr. Murphy and still get done with the mission you've been assigned. Ten years in the Marine Corps! All right, PL, would you take control of this gentleman? Fort Indian Town Gap is a National Guard training base in Pennsylvania. It's primarily chosen because it was close to the university. It's about an hour and a half uh, drive here from Bethesda. And uh, in addition to that, they have a number of uh, resources in place to support units like ours that don't have any military equipment. Despite uh, being a Department of Defense agency, we, uh, we do not have military equipment like uh, vehicles, radios, tentage. Um, Everything we do, we have to do on a borrowed dime, if you will. So Fort Indi Indian Town Gap has uh, a number of units that are able to provide those kinds of resources for us. 
The TAC is the uh, TOC, is the Tactical Operations Center. This is really the center for, uh, for operations. It's where the commander monitors the progress of the battle, where he makes his decisions. His staff works in the TAC in order to bring in information into one place where he can then uh, maintain situ situational awareness of what's going on and, and make appropriate decisions. Uh, battle Captain basically directs uh, everything that's going on outside uh, in our theater. So at the FOBs and whatnot, all the platoons uh, have different movements and uh, that they have to execute. And here we just uh, push out everybody and ensure that they are moving at the appropriate time and in the appropriate, in the appropriate place. Well, this particular station um, collects all the assessment cards for the students, um, organizes them, scans them, uh, puts all the grades in so that eventually at the um, conclusion of the experience, um, we figure out who the top scores are and who the honor graduate is for Bushmaster. Beyond that, we organize all the cards so that we can hand them back out to the students and that they get the, the feedback that comes from all of the people that assess them. There's a observer, uh, controller, or evaluator, whichever title that you want to use for these individuals, for the uh, leadership, uh, tactical leadership. Uh, there's an evaluator for combat stress control, uh, meaning how we deal with behavioral health. We have an evaluator for um, uh, ambulance uh, team leaders. Uh, these are the folks that go out and get the casualties to see how they go and get them, how they take care of them en route. We have a uh, medical care evaluator or physician evaluator, surgeon, and they're evaluating them on their technical expertise in medical care. So these cards for every position, there's eight different positions and everyone rotates through these eight positions and gets assessed on their um, skills and behavior in that particular position. I collect the cards from the faculty when they come in off the lanes and I put it all into the computer and that's a portion of what makes up their grade for Bushmaster. So in our simulation, what we've tried to do is produce as much realism as possible. Part of the realism is theatrical makeup. We, uh, we have a number of makeup artists that have uh, really become experts in applying makeup in a way that looks very realistic. We've actually moulaged over 900 patients. The day the um, IED blasts, where it makes it look like the skin is blown up and it shreds with the blood dripping everywhere and the fractured leg, of course, with the bones sticking out of it. Those are my best. <laughs> so in this scenario, we get hit by an IED, and it's up to the fourth years to figure out how badly we're hurt. It's all on them to figure out the extent of our injuries based on how we're acting and how we appear. And so, when you go out, if you go out to just a you know one of your classmates and they're laying out there and they say, "Yeah, I've got a broken leg," you know, it's it's you're simulating it in your mind, but when you see a protruding bone and you see blood and you see blood-stained uniforms. It makes it more real, you know, and you get that reaction, that visceral reaction that you look at and you say, wow, I need to do something about this right now. We've also introduced this year a number of simulators which bleed very realistic. Uh, realistically, we have some uh, uh, casualty simulators that breathe and, and vomit and do all the things that you might expect of a human casualty. And so, so that if, if it were at all possible, our students would, at some point at least during the exercise, find themselves so immersed in the Panda Car simulation that they actually believed they were there. Now what that accomplishes for us is that they're paying more attention their uh, level of involvement in the problems is higher through the combination of human role player simulators and the uh, moulage makeup. We're able to produce a fairly realistic medical simulation that we believe is probably the world's premier casualty simulation, um, uh, both in terms of uh, uh, quality and complexity and, and realism that you might expect to see in a training environment. So through that, our students come out with a lot of confidence in their ability to treat trauma casualties in the pre-hospital environment on the battlefield. He's bleeding! We gotta try to come out of the fuck. It's slowing down. I don't know if I can hold it. No, no, you have to, you have to try the turkey. Try the turkey. The mass casualty exercise has become a Bushmaster tradition. As we uh, end the exercise, it, it, it always ends with a very large scale uh, mass casualty or mass cal experience. This has come into place because it's, it's one of the things that we think makes our students stand out from the other civilian uh, medical schools that, that all do an excellent job in teaching medicine, but rarely, if ever, put the students in the position of managing a mass casualty scene. So the mass casualty exercise w was awesome. There was a simulated gunfire going off. 
there was an overwhelming number of patients. There was uh, the necessity to move these individuals from the point of care to a definitive point of care, all culminating our previous 72 hours of, uh, of tasks that we performed. So this was a single event that brought everything together. These young men and women are learning early in their medical career uh, what they're really going to face as they go out and become military physicians. As you know, the majority of the physicians in the military don't come from uses, and they have to learn this uh, uh, as on-the-job training uh, oftentimes when they're thrown into these situations. I think this really gives these students a, a leg up and uh, a better understanding of what we really signed up for. And you really can't simulate gunfire, you can't simulate chaos until you actually go through it, until you actually simulate the gunfire going over your head, you have this these noise, these limited capabilities, bombs going off. You can't do that until you actually train. You can't do that in the classroom. You got to be out in the field to go ahead and, and uh, simulate these, these exercises. We redesigned this course a couple of uh, years ago in order to convert the classroom phase leading up to Operation Bushmaster into a pre-deployment workup. So, in fact, our role play for our students starts on day one. Uh, they uh, show up to the school, they get put in a formation, which of course they're not normally uh, accustomed to in a military formation, and then they move into a uh, class or an auditorium environment where they're given a a welcome to Joint Task Force broadsword speech and a, a warning order informing them that they are deploying to Pandacar. And from there, we kick off a number of experiences which mirror what a medical officer would be expected to do during the pre-deployment workup, um, but done in an educational environment where they are discrete learning activities that support those tasks. All right, Doc, how you doing, Good. Yeah. How you doing, sir? I'm hanging in there. It's long days, isn't it? Get ready for this deployment? All right. Okay, so hey, this morning, let's talk about uh, the BC wanted to focus on uh, the personal replacement kind of issue. We understand that's kind of a one function. Yeah, I mean, the, the rock drills are really helpful because they help you, help you see what the line side uh, of the world is thinking about in terms of where they're moving their troops and where they're doing their offensive operations or defensive operations, um, and then kind of medically how you can fit in there. So. Staff work. We, we have them go through a number of planning ex exercises that focus on both military planning and medical planning, uh, dealing with health service support, and the uh, types of uh, capabilities that we experience on the battlefield, what they do, where they should be employed, and that sort of thing. At this time, at this time you should have an order prepared on your clipboard and staged on your field. You should have your outgoing delivery staged in your outgoing delivery box and you should have accounted for your penalties. If you do not push any tips, you still have stock on your table. That stock costs you one dollar per chip. So that's a, a unique way of showing us how medical logistics works. And it shows us very, very blatantly after three or four turns that logistics do not run our expected plan. We don't believe, or we don't, we expect a certain supply order to be filled and it doesn't get fulfilled. So how do we adjust our operation to support the line, to support the line medic, the line companies, those that are boots on the ground that need the medical support? Well, and we just have to adjust. I mean, that's how we do it. And so it was a unique way of showing that instead of having an hour, two hour lecture on it. Um, we did it more interactively. Interacting with commanders, we, we have a series of problems, for instance, where students are provided various uh, problems that would be of command interest, and so they're asked to provide a formal, uh, quick update brief to the commander on those tasks, and they get evaluated on their briefing skills. Hey, ma'am. Morning, how's it going, Doc? Good. 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 How are you? I'm doing well. I'm eager to hear. Uh, the persona that she portrays uh, is that of a commander. The commander is very short, curt, and wants an answer and a recommendation. And so us as medical officers, we are part of a large battalion staff. And that is how battalion staffs operate. The commander needs an answer, you get the task, you fulfill it, and you brief the commander on it. 
So it's an int introduction to how line commanders expect the medical officer to brief. So uh, a number of uh, very intense experiences that, that range over those two weeks, and the students really are frankly quite busy during that time. That classroom phase has become very important in leading up to what happens in the field exercise that we call Bushmaster. Remember that everything you do is for the support of those servicemen and their family members that we serve. This commitment we share and this commitment will get us through the hardest operational trials of our future deployments together that will make those you faced in Pandacar pale in comparison.